Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 23rd of September. And the episode title is Could the new Unity license impact VTTs? Coyote and Crow is in the spotlight this month, as voted for by patrons. The interview with Connor Alexander is up. I asked about Coyote and Crow, the strategy game, as well as the RPG. I also learned the difference between being a Cherokee and being a citizen of a Cherokee nation. Now, bad news, you have until the end of the year to download the Cult of the Lamb computer game by Massive Monster. Bronwyn wrote up the news, which is part of the fallout of the licensing change for Unity. D&D fans and those who looked at the OGL licensing drama, which hit 5e, will be familiar with the shape of this. Unity is a free, powerful and widespread platform for building computer games. And on Cult of the Lamb uses it, as does Carl Space Program, Rust Pokemon Go and many others. Now, the developers will have to pay 20 cents for each time the Unity powered game is downloaded. The catch? That fee only kicks in once a game has had over 200 thousand downloads and made more than two hundred thousand dollars in revenue. Bronwyn described the massive monsters reaction as cutting their nose off to spite their face and many people agree but many also support any and every protest against Unity technologies for the change. Fantasy Grounds, the popular virtual tabletop, also uses Unity. If they've made more than two hundred thousand dollars in revenue and have had more than 2,000 downloads, then they will be caught up. The lesser known VTT, but the official partner to Demiplane, Tailspire, does too. In a comment, Tailspire said, Like so many of you, we have been watching the Unity runtime fee situation unfold with confusion, disappointment and disgust. They also said, To be clear, we are not immediately affected, and Tailspire is not going anywhere. However, this is not why we, like many in the community, are angry. As others have perfectly educated, the fact that Unity would even attempt this makes them an actor that, as it stands, cannot be trusted. That's what happens to Wizards of the Coast with the OGL change. Game makers were worried that having changed the terms once, they could again, and trust was lost. Tailspire won't abandon Unity in a rush, but they are treating the possible future as a risk and are looking at alternatives. Speaking of Wizards of the Coast, what about their once called digital play space and now known more simply as the forthcoming D&D VTT? They've not been using Unity at all. They've been using the Unreal Engine and will have a different license. Belatedly, I have asked Smiteworks, who published Fantasy Grounds, for a comment. But let's just stick with D&D for a tad longer, as we've had a big D&D anniversary, and I kind of think it slipped under the radar. It's been 40 years since the D&D cartoon first aired. Oh yes, some of us are getting old. Merchoid had some of the 1,983, that's 1983, collectible roller coaster tickets meant to celebrate. I saw people on Facebook sharing screenshots of the receipts to prove that they had managed to snag one, which is pretty rare behaviour. And I've just checked the site now. There are still some left but Merchoid's stock level widget says there's only a few. I have no idea how the D&D licensing people work and who gets deals like this. Drop me an email if you know. I wonder sometimes if companies like Merchoid, Geek, and Fund.com pitch ideas to them and then see if they get approved. There is other licensing news from the world of tabletop RPGs this week, and absolutely colossal news if you are Cubicle 7. The publisher has confirmed they have renewed their Games Workshop deal, and this means they'll continue to publish RPGs like Warhammer Fantasy, Soulbound, Wrath and Glory, and Imperium Maledictum, 
I'm pleased C7 got their renewal, as I'm sure its loss would have been dramatic. But I am also pleased they have been spreading their eggs across more than one basket. This week, they also announced the 5e-powered A Life Well Lived, which is life path for player characters. And that's coming to Kickstarter. They're also looking for writers for the second edition of The Laundry. The last time I talked to to C7, they confirmed that they had no plans for The Laundry. But that was a good few years ago. If you don't know it, The Laundry, or The Laundry Files, is a series of books in which British civil servants go up against Lovecraftian horrors. However, the licensed roulette has not been so kind to crafty games. Right now, you can get the Mistborn RPG Collection bundle through the Bundle of Holding. You can now also buy Noble's The Golden Mandate from Drive Through RPG, which is for the Mistborn RPG. However, Noble's will be the last ever supplement for the game. I can't find the physical editions anywhere, and not even on the Crafty Games site. And the publisher has confirmed the Mistborn adventure game in digital is going away. You've got until the end of the year to grab the RPG for Brandon Sanderson's official game or miss out. The question is, will the prolific and popular author release his own game? Well, maybe he will. There's also an official Final Fantasy XIV tabletop RPG coming out and the starter set is on pre-order. Which publisher did Square Enix give that license to? No one. The game maker is doing this in-house, which is telling. Of course, they already have many great writers and many great artists. They are, of course, a large publisher. And I suspect they have an equally large marketing budget, perhaps even to challenge Wizards of the Coast. That said, it's hard to tell whether the Final Fantasy TT RPG is a real push into tabletop gaming, a PR stunt, or maybe a toe in the water. The news from Coca-Cola, though, feels more like a PR stunt. The drink maker, who sponsors both the Russian and the Chinese Olympics, has released Y3000, which is a limited edition and zero sugar soft drink. I'd ignore it, but should I actually keep my eyes open for a can? It's been co-created by an AI. It's the taste of the future, says Coca-Cola. And while that is definitely marketing talk, it's also kind of right. I suspect we will see big data chomped through by neural networks and processing models more often to better design ultra-processed food for us more often in the years to come. More traditionally, Bronwyn and I have been thinking about Halloween fashions. Bronwyn went all for October with Collective, and found some eye-catchy, spooky-themed dresses. I am less sophisticated, but I noticed secret gremlins on Friday the 13th jackets on fun.com. Why are they a secret? Well, they look like regular smart casual blouses until you see the decorated lining. I am tempted by the gremlins blazer, but it's 60 quid, and that's a lot for me to spend on clothes. However, as a counterpoint, it was Hobbit Day this week, and Just Geek made the giant Balrog rubber ducky the deal of the day, and that 25% discount lowered the cute demon's price to 60 quid. So perhaps 60 quid for a jacket isn't so bad after all. Let's outro on money with freebies and bundles. I have already mentioned that Mistborn deal, and the bundle of holding also has one for the Yellow King from Pelgrane Press, the reality warping horror. Lastly, in a surprise move from Marvel, there's a free to download adventure for the tabletop RPG, which of course was also made in house. The freebie is Enter Hydra. Why is this a surprise move? It's not a surprise that it's free, although the Disney one publisher did charge fans for the playtest rules of the Marvel Multiverse game. Enter Hydra is an actual PDF. And on that note, I survived last week's charity walk, and I will see you next week.